Washington Heights. Lights up on Washington Heights. Up at the break of day, I wake up and I got this little punk I gotta chase away. Pop the grape at the crack of dawn. Sing while I wipe down the awning. Hey, y'all. Uh, good morning. I'm among the woman from NME, and I'm joined by Lynn manuel Miranda and Kiara Hudes. Hello to you both. Hello. First and foremost, congratulations on the film. I absolutely loved it. I'm pretty sure when the soundtrack comes out, I'm going to single-handedly break all the Spotify records myself. Because um, <laughs> they are bangers everywhere. Um, Kiara, I want to start with you. Uh, In the Heights opened on Broadway in March 2008. In telling the story, not just for a different format, but for a different time, what were you focusing on when you were updating the screenplay? I'm really glad we decided to set In the Heights the movie um, right as we were making it, uh, because the neighborhood that we both live in, it continues to thrive and to be vibrant and to be rich with culture and gorgeous geography and all those things. So... um, a lot of that hadn't changed, but there were some new things you could feel more on the pulse of the conversations happening in the bodega, happening in the salons. Um, one of those things was the fever pitch surrounding um, the immigration conversation in this nation. Um, so I definitely folded that in more consciously and more explicitly. Um, that was one example. <laughs> Got it. Um, Lynn, despite in the Heights, actually coming before Hamilton, I think many people will know you more for Hamilton than In the Heights. Uh, for Hamilton fans going into this movie, what's something about In the Heights which is similar to Hamilton, and what are the biggest differences uh, in In the Heights from Hamilton? Sure. Well, first of all, they should know that Hamilton doesn't exist without In the Heights. Um, in the Heights was my coming of age graduate school. Um, we really, Kiara and I, spent our the better part of our 20s uh, writing that show together and everything I learned uh, on that I would sort of put to use uh, in Hamilton, particularly in how um, hip hop is really an underutilized tool in theater in telling a story. Like my favorite hip hop songs all tell stories um, and you know, musical theater composers often assign themes to different characters and then bring those themes back around. But when you get to assign flows to character, uh, you know, Usnavi raps like this and Benny raps like this. And when they get together, it sounds like this. Um, it, it, it becomes a whole other level of lyrical dexterity and, and a way of sort of letting us know who these people are and how they uh, go into the world. So everything I learned on on writing the, the hip hop songs in, in Heights, I would kind of take to the nth level on, on Hamilton. And there is also a Hamilton Easter egg uh, in our movie. There's just a quick little, um, a little you'll be back reference, uh, like go to the bathroom and you'll miss it. Um, but it's, it's a little Easter egg for the fans. Here goes Mr. Braggadocio. Next thing you know, you lying like Pinocchio. Oh, yo, if you scared of the bull, stay out the rodeo. Oh, I got more flows than Obi-Wan Kenobi. Oh. Well, it's early days yet, and the film hasn't sort of opened in earnest, but. How would you compare the build-up and reception to In the Heights back in 2008 to the reception to the movie so far? I think times caught up with In the Heights in a lot of ways. You know, we were two Latino writers no one had ever heard of um, working on this show. Um, And out of nowhere, it's this cast full of Latino actors and Black actors. um, And um, it, it... representation of Latinos in mainstream media is so meager and so nearly non-existent that even the good reviews of that show were like, well, there's no drugs and no crime, but it's pretty good. I mean, that was how reviewers qualified it. They were so unused to seeing our faces without crime or drugs at the center of our narrative. So if that if those are absent, it must be a fairy tale. Um, and I think the conversation um, has really shifted from representation to power. Like what, pa- what power do we have? What platforms do we have to get our stories told? And um, we don't wanna see the stories that others have been telling about us. We would like to see the stories um, that we tell for ourselves. And so uh, in a lot of ways, the world feels ready for that. The other thing is like, 
time just shifts everything. You know, when I started writing this, I was closer to Nina's age. Now I'm closer <laughs> to Kevin's age, um, you know? So um, we also approach, irrespective of presidential administrations, we, we, we approach work at different times in our life. When Kiara and I started working on the movie of this, we were parents. That was, that was very different from when we started working together in 2004. Absolutely. Um, there's so many amazing sequences in this. I particularly love the, the, like the 96,000 uh, sequence. That was amazing. Was there any particular scene that you had earmarked in the kind of like, I want to be on set to see this being shot? Pierre? Yeah. Um, each one of them is such an extraordinary memory. I was on set every day. Um, but one that comes to mind that I knew was going to be special was Paciencia y Fe, which Abuela Claudia sings. It's really her life flashing before her eyes. She starts with her childhood in Cuba um, and her mother's decision to come to New York, um, her, the struggle as she's a cleaning woman. And it's this epic, huge song. And the way John Chu described it as we were developing the idea, um, I had always imagined it in, a sub, in the subway. Um, but then the way he imagined it as almost like walking through the scene of your life. Um, I knew it was going to be special. And we brought Olga to play Abuela Claudia with us, who had also done it on Broadway. And just knowing how much she had connected with audiences there, she was our consistent standing ovation mid-show um, mm. every night. <laughs> and so I knew this she brought so much history to it. John Chu brought this new vision to it. And I knew that was going to elevate it to a whole nother level. Absolutely. I was going to ask, um, you know, how close were the visuals you had imagined when you were constructing the story to what you see on screen and what John Chu was able to do? In some, they match up pretty well. Like in Paciencia mm. Ife, I had scripted it to be in the subway. What I had scripted as a very long escalator ride, um, he put in another stop and that became a very long tunnel. But some we've discovered on site. This is the thing you get from filming on location in Washington Heights. I hadn't scripted anything to be in the high bridge pool, but as we were doing our location scout, he's like, what else haven't I seen in your neighborhood? I was like, well, you know, Julian likes to swim in this park over the summer. And next thing we know, 96,000 is being set there. Um, <laughs> so that's really different than I had originally scripted it. This filmed at the same time uh, and, and next door to West Side Story, a Steven Spielberg production. How surreal was that? And did you sort of interact with Spielberg, or did he interact with, with your set? Was, was there any interaction there between you guys? Unbelievably surreal. I think one, because you know, I directed West Side Story my senior year in high school. If there's a show I know the score to better than in the Heights, <laughs> probably West Side Story. Um, and, and in a lot of ways, West Side Story begets in the Heights because I, I knew I'd never dance well enough to get cast as Bernardo. I was terrified of going into musical theater and, and not being able to make a living. And I, I really kind of started writing in the Heights as a way of writing my dream show because um, I just, uh, I knew that, um, you know, there weren't other, uh, besides West Side Story, there aren't a lot of uh, Latino roles out there. And so to then be, filming on 175th Street while West Side Story is filming on 177th Street um, was very surreal. Um, and so uh, there was one day we were filming the last scenes of our movie, not, not, um, not the last days of the shoot, but one of the last scenes in the film. Uh, and um, I, you know, texted Tony Kushner, who was working on that West Side Story. He was like, come over here. Uh, and he came <laughs> over and saw the last few moments of the hydrants are open. And then I walked over to his set and I saw the last few notes of Maria. They were just starting a night shoot as we were finishing uh, an all day shoot. So that was one, that was like really kind of the only moment of serendipity where we were really within blocks of each other. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, well, I could talk to you guys for hours, but unfortunately our time is up. But thank you so much, Lin-Manuel Kuyama, and congratulations on the film again. It's, it's fantastic. <laughs>